Once upon a time, on a little island where it often rained, there was a broadcasting corporation. People who realised that small people, like me, were different from big people. That's really Miller. And so they decided to make programmes for small people as well. Thank you. Programmes that small people would learn from without even knowing it. Pew Pew Bunnim Groove Cuthbert Dibble and Grub. Ah! But the small people soon became big people too. Taxi! I magically produced small people of their own. Bye. So the corporation decided to make even more programmes, this time for a new generation of small people. Hello, would you drop this in for me? Okie dokie. What a nice young man, Jess. Bagpuss lives here. The corporation continues to entertain and educate small people. Morning with an enormous variety of programmes, like these animated programmes. Hello. Hello, Mr Ben. Welcome to my shop. You know where the changing room is, young sir. <coughs> Futuristic programmes. <coughs> Long running programmes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Pioneering programs. Hello again, and we begin today with nice the shirt. Playful programs. Have a look and see what they are through the square window. Come on. Magical programs. <gasps> Dramatic programs. This rather cute little fella is an eight-week-old Bengal tiger cub. Now, sadly, they're extremely really wild programs. But they can only continue to make small people's programs thanks to a unique way the corporation is paid for by the big people. Well, didn't we turn out to be a nation of well-rounded individuals? BBC One hands over the reins to BBC News 24 in a couple of minutes after a look at Monday's weather with Peter Cockcroft. Hello again. The night started off with a touch of frost in southeastern parts of Scotland. It'll end with the frost stretching from northeast England down into the Midlands, where temperatures could be as low as minus two by dawn. And there is a chance of some thickening cloud bringing a few spits and spots of rain to the southeast of England, perhaps even a snowflake to the Weald of Kent. And there might be an odd snowflake up over the highlands of Scotland, but here, uh, generally, the air mild overnight tonight, bringing some drizzly rain in off the Atlantic. Now, that's still going to be in evidence uh, during the morning across many northern and western parts of the British Isles. Brighter skies by Monday afternoon, I think, in southeastern parts of Britain. But even here, the chilly breeze still feeding a few showers in off the North Sea. Although they're going to be light, so one or two of them could contain a snowflake, but uh, not really wintry weather. It's uh, feeling cold, though. As you can see, the temperature in London may be pegged back to 6 Celsius. But those southwesterly breezes coming in off the Atlantic could lift the temperature in Oban up to around about 11 degrees. During uh, Tuesday, we find this weather front stalled across central parts of the British Isles, so that's where the cloud and rain's going to be. To the south of it, it'll be cold. To the north of it, a bit of brightness in the wind. And that's the forecast. Faint hope for England on the third day of the second test. Catch up with the latest live in Test Match special beginning in 40 minutes on Radio 4 Longwave. Everything's gonna be all right. You realise now that nowhere is safe, no, no job is safe. Everything's gonna be all right. We have to pay the mortgage or lose the house. It really is sad. Happiness is a secure job. We're just on the scrap wave. How safe is yours? Panorama, tomorrow at 10 on BBC One. 
Oh, lots of people seem to notice me. My body right now is blooming. I haven't measured it for young, I mean, since I was about 15. I'm 21. Aesthetically, I think I'm in my prime. Now, my hair used to be short and normal coloured. Now that I've dyed it blonde and grown it, it's turned me into a love stallion. No wonder. It's the prime of your life. Naked, Wednesday, 9.50 on BBC Two. Keeping you in touch through the night, now on BBC One, BBC News 24. Welcome to our BBC One viewers. You're watching BBC News 24. The time now is 1.54. A group of leading neurologists is calling on the government to ensure that people with multiple sclerosis get the same standard of care wherever they live in the UK. It follows research carried out by the MS Society, which found wide variations in how patients are dealt with across the country. It's thought around 85,000 people across the UK have multiple sclerosis. It's a disease which attacks the nervous system, leading to bouts of illness and even paralysis. But research carried out by the MS Society has found that the standards of care these patients receive vary from one part of the country to another. For example, only one patient in three has their care managed by a specialist neurologist, while two-thirds of neurology centres do not specify what services should be made available to MS patients. Fifteen of the country's leading neurologists have written to the Prime Minister asking the government to ensure all patients are offered the same standard of care. They're particularly concerned about a lack of rehabilitation services and the reluctance by some health authorities to fund certain drug therapies, which have been shown to help some, but not all, patients. The neurologists are also being supported by MPs from the all-party group on MS. Richard Hannaford, BBC News. The first monument in Britain to the playwright Oscar Wilde is being unveiled in London later today. It marks the culmination of a public appeal to establish a fitting memorial to him. The ceremony off Trafalgar Square will be attended by Culture Secretary Chris Smith and by Stephen Fry, who played Wilde in the recent film. I want everyone to look at us. I want everyone to say, look, there's Oscar Wilde with his board. So, what should we let people see as he did? For all his love of the trappings of the establishment, Oscar Wilde was a subversive. His homosexuality shocked Victorian society. At the height of his success as a playwright, he was tried for homosexual practices and sentenced to two years hard labour. It was an experience from which he never recovered. He died in poverty several years later at the age of 46. For all his creative brilliance, Wilde's fall from grace has arguably ensured he's taken longer than most great artists to be fittingly remembered. We honour Wilde's genius by dedicating... Three years ago, a, a window was dedicated to Wilde in Westminster Abbey. Corner memorial window. Now, thanks to a public appeal, the leading British artist Maggie Hambling, herself a Wilde devotee, has created the first permanent monument to him in Britain. These rough models give a clue as to what it will look like. The idea is that he is rising, talking, laughing and smoking, from this sarcophagus and the passerby should he or she choose to um, as a passerby uh, can sit on the sarcophagus and have a conversation with him I always think of wild talking I must say for the moment this rather undignified box is hiding Oscar Wilde in monument form, but in a few hours' time this will come off and in truly Wildean fashion there'll be a special ceremony involving Stephen Fry and Dame Judi Dench who'll be reading from his works and the seal of approval from the establishment, if you like. There'll be an address from the Culture Secretary, Chris Smith. But in the eyes of Oscar Wilde's grandson, this is no official pardon. Yet it does, he hopes, signal a change in attitudes. I think Middle England didn't feel it, it wasn't quite nice, you know, and Middle England I don't think felt that it, an, a monument was appropriate. Um, I think, thank God, we're finally changing, and finally we will see him as an artist in the same way that France and Germany and Italy do, first and foremost, and a homosexual, incidentally. 
The thing is, there's an awful lot talked at the moment about gays being outed, gays being uh, out. What's really important is that gays should be in, in the human race. And that's why it's important that when one of them is as distinguished a contributor to our literature and our stage as this Irishman was, that we should, we should give him a big hello. It was Oscar Wilde who said he'd be famous a hundred years after he wrote his plays. As for the way in which he's to be remembered, the design of his own memorial seems sure to be controversial. Wilde wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Madeleine Holt, BBC News. And now, if you've been watching on BBC One, you already know what the weather's going to be like. But just in case you missed it, here's Victoria Graham. Well, if you haven't yet ventured out and about, it's cold outside.